want to take a quick second to thank all of my patrons. I really appreciate you supporting my channel. Hey everybody, this is Matt from Matt's Fantasy Book Reviews, and today I am going to be going over my 2022 reading stacks using a variety of different places. Uh, first, I'm going to be going over Storygraph with you all, which is a cool little feature that I just recently found out about um, where you can import your Goodreads data into and it'll pump out some interesting uh, data that I've never seen presented in this way. So it's pretty cool. So let's start looking at this. And first is going to be uh, the 117 books I read and the moods. So the number one mood is adventurous. Uh, I think that's fair. I think a you know, a large number of books that I read are in that. But I, I think fantasy in general has a more adventurous tone to it. But uh, number two is going to be dark. Yes, this is very true. I love myself some dark fantasy. Um, then emotional. Emotional. I feel like I don't read a lot of emotional books. Oh, yes, Robin Hobb. I read a lot of Robin Hobb. And that is going to do it. Uh, funny. Yeah, I read a lot of Pratchett this year and a couple of other funny type of things. Mysterious. Then we're getting down to some weird things. Tense, light, lighthearted. Okay, I love that lighthearted and hopeful. These like these little teeny slivers, and then dark is this huge sliver. That would that makes sense. Um, let's move down to pace. This is nice and nice, evenly spread. Um, you know, about a third, not really. Um, you know, a little more than a third for fast, a little more than a third for medium, and a little less than a, about a quarter for slow. I think that stacks up right. Uh, page numbers. Yes, I think this is probably going to be true for a lot of fans of epic fantasy, uh, where the 500 plus is going to be a majority of what we read. Um, very few books, 13% were under 300. And yeah, seems about right. <laughs> fiction and nonfiction, 100% fiction. Yep, that is me. Uh, fantasy, the vast majority, 101. 18 science fiction. I don't remember reading 18 science fiction books. What are they? Martha Wells, Hod King isn't science fiction. That feels like fantasy. Nightwatch. Okay, what are they talking about? A few of these are science fiction. I think the only real science fiction that I read was Murder Bot and Gideon the Ninth. But those are arguably fantasy as well. Oh yeah, I did read some uh, some Expanse. So okay, seems about right. Historical. I read some historical. Yeah. LGBTQIA plus. I've never heard it said exactly like that, but okay. Um, five. I feel like that fits into the other ones though. Um, young adult. Oh man. I feel like all of those I didn't really go for. Uh, down to, let's see. Those are meaningless. Most authors read. Yeah. Terry Pratchett's going to be number one. Yeah. I've been kind of trying to get through Discworld um, and they're short books. So that definitely makes sense. Uh, Robin Hobb, yep, I finished out the Robin Hobb this year. John Gwen, read a lot of John Gwen this year. Will White, read a you know, good amount of Cradle books. Erickson, mostly that's the core, um, Cobra Brooch and Botch Lane books. Some Martha Wells, and then pretty small amounts elsewhere. Yeah, 100% is going to be English. What? Basque. Okay, what book did it claim that I, that I read in Basque? A sale? Yeah, okay. That's not true. Whatever. Croatian? Is that going to be malice? Okay, they're, you're full of it, Storygraph. Okay, this one's kind of cool. Uh, number of books and number of pages. So books reads in blue, pages reads in red. What am I supposed to make sense of this? Essentially that I read less over time in the year, which makes sense. I... Uh, I think the more I got involved in BookTube, the less I read, um, which is fine. I mean, just spending most of the time that I spend making videos and responding to comments and editing is time that I would have been reading. So that makes about, uh, a lot of sense too. And average rating 3.88, mostly fives, then a pretty steady decline from there. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Let's move over to my personal spreadsheet for 2022. Um, and let's start on this tab over here, yearly stats. So I read, this is going to be the most accurate one. I always write things perfectly in here. So six, a little over 60,000 pages read. Um, cool. It's a little over 17 million words read, which is kind of a meaningless stat, but I might as well keep it. Um, meaningless, meaningless, meaningless. 
Um, books read 117. Uh, so the average length books. Okay, this is like if I actually read normal sized books, I would have read 193 books, but I read big fantasy books, and so I read 117. My average score was 3.81, and my average pages per day was 166. Now, the concerning thing for me is, so the last three years I've been keeping these stats, uh, 2019 and before, I read very little, so I didn't really keep these, but uh, this one. So average score in 2020 was 4.29, and then it went down to 3.96, and now it's 3.81. Am I becoming more cynical, or what's going on there? Why, am I, why is my score dropping? I do not know. Um, all right. So this is my average pages per day from books through the beginning of year. And yeah, we've gotten a steady decline. And that is because of Booktube. So that's your fault. 153 pages per day from Legends and Lattes was my big one. And my lowest was 53 at Unseen Academicals. Yeah, Legend I think the reason for this is Legends and Lattes was very short. And I just busted it out. And then I got sick for Unseen Academicals. And economics, no idea why that went down so low. But yeah, a little bit of a decline. But if I compare that to my overall data from Lifetime, you'll see that it kind of is increasing. And in part because I just started reading a lot more right about here. And I don't know what year that was or m month. But then it kind of leveled out and then it's kind of been declining a little bit. But that little light blue line shows that it's increasing over time. Um, so kind of interesting. Let's go to audiobook. Audiobook is declining. Yeah, that makes sense. Same reason. Um, and I am declining over time. This is my all time. So this is my this year all time. That line's about the same. So, and it would have been way different if I, at the beginning, I read these, I, I wasn't like, realizing that I could listen to audiobooks while doing other things other than driving. And I wasn't driving a lot. That was like during COVID and I wasn't driving to work. So I read like so little. Um, and then I just started driving a lot more and listening more. Um, but yep, yeah, 2022 is declining. Hopefully that levels out at some point. Um, this is some data I like to look at that shows the the pink line here is where I need to be daily to get 50,000 pages. And that's my goal. And so from the beginning of the year, I was on track for a lot more than that. Um, and you'll see I ended up at over 60,000. Uh, but I was never really in threat of dip dipping down into the 50K. And this one says it in a different way. So this is like the average from everything I've read, you know, spread out to a year. So there's huge jumps at the beginning because every day you can really change things. Um, but then little teeny jumps. But you'll see that kind of kept going down and down and down and down. Um you know, for a little while, I was, you know, looking like I was going to get over 66,000 um, and ended up at the 60,000 mark. So that's cool. Um, total red. Okay. Now this is not just 2022 data now. This is lifetime data, but I can, so this is my, what am I looking at? Books read. So books read per day. And if I stretch this out to just 2022, this is a cool little no, I mean, this is pages read in a day, and that doesn't look like I'm declining. I guess, I mean, it is, but when you stretch it out to lifetime, you can see that it's definitely increasing. And then the same for audiobooks. This is pages per day. Let's go to 2022. That definitely looks like a decrease. And then over time, yeah, so little at the beginning, and then big jumps. And then this is combined. Um... We'll go to 2022 again. Yeah. And then another little cool thing on this sheet that I, it's gone. If I look over on my regular one, you'll see that I can uh, see what the most I've ever read in a day. So the most I ever read in a day was 278 pages. And the least I've ever read in a day is zero. That makes sense. I got sick. Sometimes I read zero. It happens. And the most physically out of the book is 209. I read very consistently, not like a lot, but every day I kind of read the same amount. Um, so I think that's all the data I have to show you there. And then, so the last, oh, you know what? I think you might be interested a little bit. Now this is more lifetime, not just this year, but I'm gonna check out my yearly stats. No, I checked out that. Ranks. 
Yes. Oh, my yearly stats is all messed up. I got to fix that. Um, my ranks. So um, what you're looking at over here is this is kind of like on the left-hand column here, everything I'm looking at, like right here on the left, the B, oh, I shouldn't have done that, is separated out the series. And my favorite series, I kind of update this regularly and I separate it into different groups. So you have like the top of the top. Here is the first eight, and then you have like very good is the next batch, and then good in the next batch, and then a little weaker in the next batch, and then kind of like the bottom tier in the bottom in the next batch. And you can see my series scores here in the E and the F column, um, and what I rank them. You've seen a number get five out of fives, um, and then it kind of dips down over time. I need to spread that one out a little bit, and then. Daily book averages, the most I've ever averaged from a book was Towers of Midnight, 148 pages a day from physical book. And then Blood Rights on audio, 104. Um, yeah, series averages, um, the fastest, uh, the most I've ever read from a series average is King's Killer Chronicle, but there's so little. Realm of the Elderlings is the impressive one because there's so many books. And on average, when I'm reading Realm of the Elderlings, I read 117 pages a day. Um, the most from a series I've read is Malazan, 15,000 pages. Then Discworld, Realm of the Elderlings, Wheel of Time, and then a big drop off. And then series words, it should be the same thing. No, so Wheel of Time has a lot of words per page. So Malazan's number one at almost 6 million words, and then Wheel of Time at 4.4, .4, and then Realm of the Elderlings at four, and then a big drop off. Uh, Discworld has a lot of pages, but there's not a lot of words on pages. And then author scores, you've seen a few authors get Five out of five for every book. Brian Lee Durfee, um, Alec Hudson, only he's read, written one book that I've read. Pyar Abba's written three. Jay Kristoff, one. RJ Parker, two. Fonda Lee, three. Nicholas Eames, two or one, two. And John Gwen is a lot of books I've read, and that's a 4.94. That's, that's an impressive number right there. And then author pages, Brandon Sanderson, I've read the most of, because he did a lot of Wheel of Time and the Cosmere stuff, 12,000, then Terry Pratchett, then Robin Hobb, author words, Brandon Sanderson by far on the top, then Robin Hobb, then Steven Erickson. And then I don't know that you'll find any of this interesting over here. This is books ranked by year. This is pretty geeky stuff. I'm not going to delve into that stuff. So the last thing I'm going to show you is my Goodreads. Um, Goodreads pages read is higher. I don't know why. Like books that aren't always perfectly accurate there. Shortest book, 112 pages. Longest, 1,718. Not much to show you here. Just a bunch of images of the book cover. So I'm going to end it there. Uh, thank you so much for watching. And as always, happy reading to you. Thanks again to all of my patrons and a special shout out to my Ascendant tier patrons, Sky, Russell, Ron Reich, Romeo Mike, and CJ.